So even if you're close up, get back. Get back. All right. Uh, so how no. do you? What? No. <laughs> Here at 105.7 Avonby FM. Afternoon, this is Ben until 2 o'clock today. Now, if you're a bit like me and you've had those dreams where you know where you're, you're just about to nod off and then all of a sudden, oh, you fell. Do you get that? Whether it's you fell over a cliff or you fell off something or you fell off a chair. Um, well, I've had a look about because I've had three of them in the past week. So I went and tried to find exactly what it could be and um, I found out what it is and I'll tell you next. One of these people that has those dreams where you're kind of falling, apparently what it is is a red flag for something in your life. For example, your finances, your career, a relationship, something to do with your house, that kind of thing. So if you get those dreams that you're falling, apparently there's something else in your life that's falling, do you see? Not sure if I'm buying this because it's a wee bit too simple as in falling downwards and all that. It's got to be something more complex because I can't just have that. I can't just have a dream that's about me being worried. We've got to have something better than that. So how did you get involved in, in Avon Beat FM? Um, I get involved in Avon Beat FM because I'm involved with a, another station called GVFM up in the Garnet Valley. Um, it's a kind of it's a similar project as what Avon Beat are doing. So I was asked to come along and kind of help out and present a couple of shows and kind of work in behind the scenes and stuff. Yeah. So that's how I get involved. Um, so was it Ian had called you uh, to do this. So Ian gave me the calling. To, to come along to Irvin Beat, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so no, well, Ian, Ian phoned me and he asked if I would if I would like to present a couple of shows down here, yeah. um, and then somehow I ended up doing four a week, um, doing the kind of lunchtime one, which between twelve and two. Yeah. Um, so I've really enjoyed it. It's kind of unusual for me. I'm used to kind of doing um, kind of one-off shows and kind of covering for people. So to do yeah. a kind of sequence of them has been quite good because be able to kind of recurring features and different bits and pieces that have happened again and again and again. So you've so, slot now, basically. Yeah, aye, aye, it's been it's been good. Yeah, that's good. So are you enjoying having the power of your own slot? Your own little photograph up on your website? Um, well, yeah, mm, yeah. Um, yeah, it's been quite slightly strange having the photograph on the website because normally I'm not listed because I normally kind of do the odd show here and there. Um, so it's been a, it's been quite strange. People have been able to see what I look like. Um, it's not a good thing. It's always seen a good face for radio, so yeah. just keep it as that. You, you like to avoid the blame when anything goes wrong. That's exactly it. Yes, I like <laughs> I like trying to avoid whenever anything goes wrong. I like to not be there because <laughs> if I am, I normally get blamed for it. Oh. <laughs> These are my songs, that's what I'm going to play next, and these are all my jingles, the ones that are all red. See, I have learned from the training, slightly, not very much. It's good to know. You'd be better getting my good side. It's there. It's there. <laughs> it's outside. <laughs> And today, if you're on the internet, why don't you visit our website? It's urbanbeatfm.co.uk. Click on my happy smiley face and you can send me a request from there. Hello. Hello. Yeah, it's you I'm talking to. I just want to give you a fact that I'm many children in the room. silent every time you're recording. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to sit and yell at that. Really? That face? Mm -hmm. that, exactly. that constipated face. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like your photo on the website. I looked a bit too happy on the website, actually. So put one that's more of me on the website, which is more crab it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's definitely what I get for acting up in the studio today. Just saying the weather was miserable and I was going to eat the weather script. I've just found out that the paper it's printed on does not taste very nice. <laughs> Memo to self, don't eat script. 
So if you fancy texting us this afternoon, it's 07935 Or you can phone me as well, it's 01294 271 Just as someone complaining they didn't know the studio number. It's 01294 271 There you go, I've told you. So, so, so how are you finding actually not doing the show by show, getting shows worked out? Like how I work at a show every um, four times a week, which is something you're doing that more regular than normally would. Um, I think I think with the kind of shows that do because they've been more regular, we kind of started with features that I kind of thought we were going to do, and then as the week progressed, thing you, you can understand things work, maybe things don't work, um, and then depending on the presenters that are round about me, I can maybe bounce off them and stuff. So one of the features that we didn't start with, but has worked quite well, is Nori's knowledge. Yes. Um, we're the afternoon presenter who's on two or three days a week after me and um, we've got just about five general questions and we test him on here to see how well he's done from the start he was pretty rubbish and then he got a bit better during the broadcast and then just as we finished he's really pretty useless actually he's got really really bad and um, so it was like down to as low as two out of five um, but that was a feature we never conceived to do. It was something that we just we tried one day. It seemed to work. We carried on. Well, there's other features we started with that didn't really work, so we've kind of yeah. dropped them. Um, but overall, it's been good. <laughs> See, we're just we're talking about Nori's knowledge. Yeah. Um, we're just seeing how rubbish he was. Yeah. Um, he was really bad. Come here, come here, come here. Nori been very you, rubbish. You, you at, can't at see you on side. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Just popped in. Oh, my, my photograph is on there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's Inspector Cluzo. I must go, you know. I will see you later. Bye. <laughs> yes. I don't know what he's on, but I'd quite like some of it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You want to maybe buy some, though? I know, it's, uh, I'm slightly worried. Yeah. So, um Does this music not say kind of seaside to you? No, it reminds me of mussels. Ah, oh, well, no, them kind of mussels. Thank you very much. No. <laughs> <laughs> not seaside mussels. <laughs> well, speaking of kind of the seaside and things like that, two theme parks have released um, very interesting new policies. We've got a sunny theme park as barring visitors from putting their hands in the air while riding the roller coasters following complaints about body odour. <laughs> <laughs> I was to say, see when I'm on the roller coaster and you get your hands up, that's kind of the last of your worries. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 around there. That's great. So uh, the other story as well that, that caught my eye today was um, a, a certain theme park that everyone knows on YouTube, but we shan't mention. Mm -hmm. um, they're revising their poolside dress code. They're asking men not to wear speedos next to the pool. <laughs> That's not the worst bit because you think, well, okay, you can kind of understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, but reading the, the press release, there's a couple of bits in it that are a bit strange. One of them is that they may also introduce this, right? Mandatory, so it means everyone has to do it. Mandatory male bikini waxes. Mm -hmm. How are they going to police that? I don't Well, I mean, you're talking about police. I mean, I've listened to all these emails this morning, and some of the things they can do about the weird laws around the world, and one in particular. In Wyoming, a policeman is allowed to bite a dog and is barking to get him to be quiet. And I've tried that with the wife, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they might do. This theme park might bring dogs in, you know, and then retrain them, and then they decide whether people need to bite them. The dogs might tap them on the shoulder and say, Can you be quiet, please, instead of biting? They're on the ground. There's just one thing with this um, theme park down south I'm talking about. They don't want men to wear speedos when they're near the pool because it's a bit kind of unsightly, and then they're asking for the, the whoosh. Do you know the thing is, right? I know the budget cuts here, right? Uh huh. But did they have to employ such a short cameraman? I know. Are you very small? You're very, very small. You mm. can barely hold that camera. That's because he was talking about midges. Ah. They got it wrong. They, they missed. Yeah. Hello. Are you there? Bye. Thank <laughs> you. 